Hello viewers, welcome to episode 2 of our discussion on IT modernization key to success in the digital world. Hope you found episode 1 insightful. In case you missed episode 1, the link of the same is in the description box below. Do check out. Now let's continue our discussion with our panelists, Joseph, Sundar and Sunil. Let's kick off episode 2 of our conversation with you, Joseph, and discuss what are some of the key things that enterprises in terms of end users should keep in mind when starting their modernization journey. Thanks for the question, uh, Sneha. I'm going to refer back to what Sundar talked about in his answer previously. One of the key thing is the user experience. So we are modernizing primarily for the user experience in addition to the other agility and the security and all the other aspects, right? So when we are talking about it, we need to modernize for the future users, not for the current or the previous users, past users. Most often what happens is the product owners, they have a very good idea about the past usage and the current usage. But when we are talking about modernization, we need to think about the future users who are going to come in. Maybe they are young generation which are coming in. Maybe they are going to go into a new geography. So that's the kind of thinking that has to be there for a product owner to think about the future uh, users. Maybe you will the, the application, the enterprise will expand to include neurodivergent people. Maybe few other accessibilities will have to be considered. So those are first things that need to be considered. The second one from a user aspect is error on over communication. The users or your customers are not reading emails and your notifications and all the other communication as and when you send it, every time you send it. So it is better for them to be aware of things that are going to come in and over communicate from different dimensions, over communicate. So that is when they will know, oh, okay, so these changes are coming in, right? So the third point is, which is, which is somewhat related to the second point, limit the surprises to the users, even the good surprises, because users are used to using an application in a particular form, whether it is an enterprise app or any other app, suddenly things change, the buttons change, the workflow changes, they are going to be surprised. They are going to be left uh, amused about what's, what's happening out here and they will drop the usage. So those are the three points that I would say, modernize for the future users, error on over communication and limit the surprises, even the good ones. Thanks, Neha. Sure. Thanks, Joseph. My next question is for you, Sundar, and it revolves around the key IT services that modernization service providers can offer to enterprises. And how can enterprises select the right modernization service provider for their needs? Uh, thanks, Neha. Uh, the modernization service providers you know, uh, generally offer a wide range of services to, uh, to the enterprises to update their technology infrastructure, applications, and processes. Now, some of the key features uh, or the key services that uh, are generally provided, you know, uh, they provide a, a IT strategy and modernization roadmaps, you know, to align the customer's business goals and provide them a timeline and recommendation. That is one of the key service uh, service providers provide. The second is the uh, legacy system modernization. You know, this involves uh, assessing and updating the legacy systems to make them more compatible with modern technology standards. You know. Uh, it can uh, include re-hosting of applications to the cloud or refactoring code or rebuilding system with modern architecture. You know, that is a legacy modernization as a, a service. Uh, the, uh, the other one is the application modernization. You know, uh, it helps service uh, um, you know, enterprises modernize their applications to migrate them to cloud, uh, containerize them or refactoring them to more scalable and uh, you know, uh, maintainable kind of systems. Uh, in the previous episode, uh, you know, uh, Joseph had talked about data modernization so service providers assist in data modernization by migrating the data you know uh, data integration adoption of modern storage and processing technologies like data lakes data warehouse uh, you know sql databases and so on and so forth uh, uh, service providers you uh, know also offer expertise in moving application and workloads to uh, uh, cloud platforms like uh, aws azure or uh, google cloud you know, the, the whole objective is to ensure that there's a cost optimization, scalability, and security. You know, that's the primary reasons why they do this. Uh, now, providers also help implementing DevSecOps uh, uh, practices. Uh, 
you know, again, you mentioned earlier about the uh, importance of security. So uh, it uh, not, on, not only enables automation, uh, it, uh, it improves the continuous integration, continuous delivery. You know, it also ensures that the GTM, uh, the go-to-market for the customers is much more predictable. Uh, another key service uh, that are provided is in containerizing applications, you know, uh, using technologies like Docker and Kubernetes, uh, you know, as well as transitioning to microservices architectures. Uh, it actually improves the agility and scalability of the organization. Uh, now, uh, uh, the service providers focus on enhancing uh, security measures uh, primarily from a regulation and compliance perspective because there are a lot of industry regulations and uh, data protection standards you know, across various geographies, and that also is focused by service providers. Now, um, modern service providers also include, you know, uh, uh, from a, a user experience, again, as jo Joseph was talking about, you know, by redesigning interfaces and optimizing applications uh, for better usability and customer satisfaction. Because that's the key, you know, not only to the service providers' customers, but the uh, end customers as well. Now, uh, Providers help enterprise harness the data through uh, analytics, uh, business intelligence solutions, uh, enabling you know data-driven decisions and uh, uh, insights. You know that's the uh, goal that they want to achieve. Now, uh, the second part of your question was you know selecting the right service provider. Uh, uh, you know the right modernization service provider is a crucial decision for any organization. You know as it can uh, significantly impact the success of modernization efforts. Mm -hmm. Are not taking the time to thoroughly evaluate and uh, uh, potential providers and align their capabilities with business objectives uh, is essential for a successful partnership. While uh, you know selecting the right modernization service provider uh, should consider service providers' expertise and experience, uh, their references, the case studies, the technology stack they have worked on, uh, the cost and budget alignment, uh, you know, and long partnerships uh, that they have had uh, previously. Uh, the most important thing for any organization is to actually see if there's a cultural fit between their organization and the service provider. Because uh, if you're talking about, because uh, uh, you know, modernization is not a one-time activity. It's an ongoing, continuous activity. So this becomes very, very crucial. Thank you. Great insights. Thanks, Sundar. My final question of this episode is for you, Sunil. How is emerging technology like Gen AI changing the way the enterprises approach modernization? And what are some of the specific ways that emerging tech can be used to accelerate and improve modernization initiatives? Yeah, thanks, Tia. So, like, you know, both Sundar and Joseph have talked about modernization and the different ways in terms of the application and those modernizations are being conducted. But if you see uh, recently, right, some of these modernization approach, the enterprises have to change because of the way these new technologies are emerging and you talked about generative AI you're asking, right? So earlier, the modernization journey used to be uh, in a long uh, plan, but now, uh, you, we can see that the cycle is cutting down. So the way they are approaching is through leveraging these new technologies which are emerging. So, and there are three or four different areas in which uh, they look at it, right? So we talked about user experience, both, you know, Sundar and Joseph talked about the customer experience in there. So where uh, the, you know, things like hyper-personalizations and things have now emerging, uh, the metaverse and these new technologies, immersive technologies are coming up where uh, the organization enterprises are uh, embracing those uh, technologies. Business model itself, right, earlier uh, the model used to be, uh, and the technology used to enable it, but now the models itself are leveraging technology the models are created the business models are created based on the technology enablers to uh, leverage on the revenue the large data insights which they capture it which they get it uh, so based on that uh, these modelizations are uh, being uh, being conducted now the second part of the question which you asked about in terms of the specific ways uh, and i think uh, to be very fair right now all this is is kind of covered uh, by, you know, you first try to shift to the cloud and making sure that all your uh, data applications are being able to modernize uh, modernize and leverage on the new technologies which are available, right? So even generative AI, while we talk about it uh, there, but 
there are other technologies like now 5g enabled networks and things the things which were earlier uh, difficult or maybe you know for time lagging perspective the automation and things have become much more faster because of 5g age technologies being available uh, at uh, at lot of these industries and manufacturing uh, companies which are now enabling you talk about autonomous cars uh, so all these are helping customers embrace this uh, into the specific ways right so we also talked about uh, devops we talked about data warehouse so all these are uh, the ways by which uh, they need to ensure that moving to the cloud uh, creating a data lake making sure that that is available generative ai experimented do a poc on it and lot of these are now available through hyperscalers uh, so embrace that uh, this is not uh, you know probably you know where there are skepticism around uh, generative ai but that is the way in which we see that uh, modernizations would happen there is a lot of data uh, which is uh, you know you can enable uh, through that data for your modernization journey and an application uh, be it call it you know rationalizations and things uh, would would happen uh, from that perspective and last and i think we have talked about blockchain a lot and it's been there uh, but if you see now uh, with uh, with the technology which was available uh, you can see the web3 uh, emerging uh, in uh, in the in the modernization space and uh, you know that is being used as decentralized identity uh, a trust being built so a lot of this thing which used to be very central in the nature uh, enterprises are adopting to make it decentralized be it in the you know again i'll go back to the government things but government and enterprises both are leveraging this uh, technologies uh, to to take it from there right so and then that are the ways which enterprises uh, should adopt and they are uh, probably going there which service providers are now helping them to uh, take it there uh, to uh, the enterprises to uh, build some of these solutions uh, from a modernization perspective so sure. thanks sunil great points with that it is a wrap on this episode of tech talks with nascom insights Viewers, hope you enjoyed this discussion on IT modernization, the key to success in the digital world. Thanks a lot, Sundar, Joseph, and Sunil for sharing such interesting insights. Viewers, stay tuned for more insightful discussions happening in the Indian tech industry with Nascom Insights YouTube channel. Please like, share, and subscribe. Till then, it's goodbye from everyone here at Nascom Insights. Thank you.